Well, like I said, this morning, we're very excited to have Bethany Christian Services with us. We're starting a new series this week and next week called Family Changes Everything. We're going to talk about the importance of family. We're going to talk about how uh, family is something that we can take for granted, but it's, it's really within the heart of God. And I want to read this passage in Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 4. It says this, Paul writes, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God desi- decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. And this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So, verse 6, we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Anyone who has put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their savior, as it tells us here in in verse 5, we have been adopted into God's family. We weren't born into God's family. We didn't come into this world a part of the family of God. No, it was the decision by faith that we made that God had desired for us before the foundations of the world. It's a crazy paradigm. It doesn't even make sense in our human minds that God desires that for us, but he does. And it's only received by his grace, what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. But this adoption allows us to be a part of God's family. And that's why I'm so excited today to have a few ladies from Bethany Christian Services and, and their organization and some of the volunteers as they're going to share a, an adoption story. And anytime we have an opportunity to talk about adoption here at CCCH, I think it's so important to understand that this isn't just about human adoption, which is so valuable, but this speaks to our heart and it speaks to the heart of the Father because he has chosen to do that for each and every one of us who trust in Jesus as their Savior. So I'm, I'm super excited for the time that we're going to have this morning. So I'm going to introduce these ladies, and then after, we're going to show a clip, a quick clip, and then they're going to come up here. And so when they come on stage, we want to make sure we give them a warm CCCH welcome. So we're going to have Beth Cronowitz with us. If, if you know the Cronowitz, Brian is actually on the board at Bethany Christian, just started there recently, and Beth has been a volunteer with Bethany Christians. They are adoptive parents as well. And then we have Julie. Julie's going to be coming from somewhere. There she is over there. You'll see her on stage in a second. She'll be here in the middle. And Julie uh, is the, she served as a pregnancy counselor with Bethany for the past four years. And she actually lives in Rockford with her husband and three kids. And Julie's connection this morning is with the birth mom who gave her child up for adoption. And her name is Darian. And we're excited to have Darian over here to my left, your right, and Darian placed her baby boy with Bethany almost two years ago, and, and she lives here in Palatine, so a little bit north of us, and going to school for business administration, and she made the choice to, to give her son up for adoption, and we're really excited to hear Darian's story, hear the connection that Darian and Julie have, and, and Beth is going to kind of moderate that story time with us. We're going to see some pictures of the family. It's going to be a great morning. So I'm going to pray for us. We're going to watch this video. Once these ladies get up on the stage, let's make sure we give them a warm CCCH welcome. So if you would, would you pray with me? Jesus, we are so thankful. We're so thankful that because of your death and resurrection that we can be called your sons and daughters. We can be a part of your family. You have made a way for us. It truly is a miracle, the, the, the spiritual adoption that we can have into your family. And so right now, may our hearts be uh, attuned to that. May our our minds be prepared, Lord, to hear this story of the powerful work of a human adoption and how that just speaks to your heart, Father. Uh, We're so thankful for this time together as a church family, even in the midst of everything going on in this world. We are thankful, Lord, that we can be a part of your family. And because of that, Lord, we know that changes everything in our lives. It changes our eternal destiny It changes our perspective about our day-to-day. It it changes our mindset about what we're going through in this season. And God, we're just so thankful because we don't deserve it. And yet you give us that love and grace freely. And so, Lord, would you just speak to our hearts this morning through Darian and Julie's story. We love you, Jesus. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Go ahead, turn your attention to the screens. A worldwide pandemic. Hospitals are overwhelmed. The virus is spreading fast. The suffering is staggering. For the child who feels alone at home and the one unprotected at the border. 
for orphans living in institutions and refugees living in uncertainty. We will never stop fighting for you. For the love you need and the safety you seek. Because no matter what forces pull us apart, there's a greater force that brings us together. Well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Julie and Darian, for sharing with us this morning. We're so grateful that you're here. Julie, we're going to be talking a lot about generalities today because there are no specifics in the road to adoption. So can you kind of give us some general idea of what point in the pregnancy do you usually get to meet with birth parents and kind of how often do you meet and what do those meetings kind of look like? Yes, I will do my best. Um, you're correct that no situation is the same. It looks very different. Um, Birth parents come to us at all different ages and stages and situations, and some we do have the privilege of working with right from the beginning. Most of those referrals will come from local pregnancy centers. Um, many of our birth parents come with unexpected pregnancies, and so they're in a place of feeling really overwhelmed. Um, really wanting to gather information and see what their options are. And it's really a place where we try to slow down the process. And um, at the point that I meet with them, it's usually because they do want to know more about adoption. And so if it's a stage, if it's early on in the stage, then um, I'll usually meet with them throughout their entire pregnancy and support them the best that that we can, and one of the things I love about Bethany is um, being able to support them through our Life Impact Fund, which um, can cover a lot of their stressors, financial needs, um, whether that's transportation to appointments or food or childcare. Um, those are different things we look at so that they can focus primarily on their pregnancy and being able to make a clear decision. Um, and then some of our birth parents, we have the privilege of meeting um, post-birth. And so that's kind of a whirlwind of a process. But Darian came to us, and she'll tell her story. Um, and even there, it's how can we best support you um, as you're trying to make this really difficult situation. So did I answer? Great. Yeah, and so she said, Darian, you actually came to Bethany after you've given birth. So how did you come in contact with Bethany and what was your meeting like? So I decided to go through Safe Haven to place my child. Um, it's not a direct agency, but they work with placing two different agencies and Bethany just happened to be up for their turn. So Bethany actually connected with me, um, which was truly a blessing. They, they sat down and met with me and just really gave me my options. Um, I had no idea that I would still be able to be so involved in my child's life. They, they told me I could pick his family. They told me I could be, I could have an open adoption if that was what I wanted. Um, they really just met me where I was at, and they understood that I had concerns and questions. They listened, and they were just incredibly supportive of everything that I wanted, and they made sure that I was going to find it. That's great. So, Julie, we do know that not all birth moms who come to you end up making an adoption plan. Some choose to parent. How do you support them through that decision-making process? Yes, it's, we keep it very open-handed, the whole process, because we know that they are, this is very emotional, and we want to make sure that at no point do they feel coerced into making a decision, and so it's very important to us that from the beginning, we're making sure they're connected to local resources like pregnancy centers so that they can pursue parenting options and they do know what's available to them. Um, and some are taking parenting classes as they're also considering adoption as an option. Um, we try to remain really neutral and help them think through 
um, who is your support system? What is your long-term plan? And let's um, listen and, and kind of see what this is gonna look like because it is true. So in the state of Illinois, um, birth parents do not sign over their rights until 72 hours after the child is born. And so in that time period, um, we have had moms decide to go ahead and parent. And so we really do need to be there to support them and follow up with them. And we bring, if they do decide to parent, then we, we have a gift basket or a gift bag of essentials that they'll need and, and we continue to follow up with. So That's yeah. great. And so you did mention the signing process. Um, what is the hospital experience with for um, everyone involved, the, the birth mm -hmm. mother, the potential adoptive parents, all the way up through the signing process. How do you support that time frame? Oh man, that's a really emotional, that's a really emotional time. Um, and it's bittersweet. It's really important that everyone involved feels very supported. Um, like I said, in those 72 hours, there's a lot of nerves and fears and questions on all sides. Um, so a lot of prayer goes into that time. I really, I see God work so much in the details of especially that time where birth moms especially are feeling um, really vulnerable and it's really beautiful. Sometimes they, the birth parents ask the prospective adoptive family to be there at the hospital and um, that can be a really special time of support and reassuring that they will be there and they are gonna support them. Um, and, and so it's, my supervisor says it's like, it's holy ground, it's sacred ground that time. And, and it's just really, yeah, there's lots of unknowns, but. As we do know, but um, a lot of adoptions these days are open adoptions. Yeah. Can you explain to us a little bit about what that looks like, how that works from your perspective? Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about open adoption just coming on board with Bethany and something that they train all of the prospective adoptive families in. And studies have shown how open adoption is truly so beneficial for all of the parties involved. And Bethany does an amazing job of training families so that they feel prepared. But really, it's left up to the birth parent. Um, in the state of Illinois, Openness isn't, you don't sign a contract of what that's going to look like, and so it's its just a continual conversation that Bethany facilitates, um, and it can look so different. So um, openness to one mom might be, um, Darian, you have a text message each Saturday, is that so? with the family and picture and update. Um, it can be sharing a Google photo page where birth parents can check that regularly when they would like to. Um, and so that that's how openness could look for one, um, but it could look totally different. And some of our birth parents don't know what they are gonna be ready for. So they might think they want something, but then along the way, it just looks very different. That's why it's awesome as a, um, organization and agency to be able to continue to facilitate those relationships because it can be different. And then there's semi-open, which would be done through the agency um, letters, maybe once or twice a year. And then we have we do have some birth parents that choose closed for different reasons and just aren't ready yet, but at any point could change their mind. Okay. And Darian, she mentioned you do have an open, open adoption. Um, how did that go, like meeting for the family for the first time, choosing the family? Kind of what's your relationship now that you're like two years into this process? Yeah, so meeting the family for the first time was definitely nerve-wracking, to say the least. Um, I had questions more than I could even get out of my mouth. Um, but it was also exciting. It was very exciting for the potential that it could have. Um, I was just, I was blessed to have Julie with me and to have her help facilitate that. She had a lot of questions that I hadn't even thought of yet. So it was really nice to have Bethany there to support me through that meeting as well. Um, but we sat down, we had breakfast. The, um, the adoptive mother had this big photo album, the ABCs of adoption, and for B it was birth mother. And it was just, a, it, it just hit my heart, you know. Um, so it really was just 
from that point forward, it kind of flowed. You know, I saw their real interest in my son, and I saw the life that they could give him. And they told me they were open to keeping the name that I had given him. And that really kind of sealed the deal for me. They were just incredible, and they listened, and they understood, and they were willing to give me what I needed out of an open adoption. We discussed, um, you know, more of the details of how we would do that. And it's evolved over time. It's, um, like Julie said, I get a picture and update every single weekend. They never forget about me, um, which is just really incredible. It's, it's really grown into like a friendship. They call me if they've got questions, something's going on with him, they let me know. Um, the openness has just, it's evolved over time with our relationship. And I think that's, very important to me to be able to see my son grow up still, so. Yeah, we, we actually got to see a few pictures of you. Kind of recently you got to meet him as well, which is very special. I'm sure to keep that bond going as well, get to see him grow. Oh, absolutely. They, we love to get together and do meetings, and we just sit for days, and we, we play, and we talk, and we catch up. And, and I get to know about Dan and Marissa, the, his adoptive parents as well. I get to learn about them and their family and what they like to do and who they are. And it really is just an incredible time when we get to be together. Right. And, of course, that's not a requirement that you have, but it is something that was able to develop through your time spending that relationship. That's awesome. Um, now, after the adoption is complete, how do you continue supporting the birth mothers? Yeah, that time is really crucial. Following, um, it's it's a, a loss like no other, and so it's really Im important that they don't feel left at that time. And as you know, everyone grieves things differently, but um, we really encourage the adoptive family to try to stay in close contact with um, the birth parent, especially in the two weeks following, just really, really enforcing and ensuring that baby's doing okay, we're thinking of you, and then that can gradually turn into what they've planned um, for that to look like. But for us as pregnancy counselors, um, within the within two to four weeks of post-placement, we really try to meet with them and walk through the grief loss process and what that could look like and feel like for birth parents specifically. Really, really wanting them to not feel alone. Um, really encouraging journaling. Some of our moms write to the baby to um, just keep that, that process going. So it's unique to each one, but it's something that is really dear to us. And we'll, ki we'll continue to follow up um, for as long as they will let us. It's a nice wraparound support yes. that you provide for these women, especially. And what was something very unique that you just had in January, you did your first ever retreat for the birth moms. And you did a lot of intentional planning, a lot of things to really make the birth moms feel special and feel loved. And you had some great activities and, and talks that you had planned. Can you share? That was, it really was a, an amazing thing to see just this care. Can you share us a little bit more about that retreat? Yeah, that was so cool because that was something that God had put on my heart and I, um, like a year before, um, but it was like just perfect timing when it all came together. Um, and Allison, and you made cookies. There was a whole team of people that made it happen that provided the cabin where we met at, which was so sweet. Um, that environment was huge for our birth moms to open up and have fun. And um, I think there were eight moms that came and it's like was having like all my favorites in one place, but in a, in a safe place where they felt like they could um, open up. And we talked about hard stuff, right? And how um, these different emotions can exist at the same time, like such deep heartache, but also joy in you know, their family and watching their baby grow with a family that they're learning to love, but also like navigating that relationship with the adoptive family and how that can be weird and hard and awkward. Um, and then just having fun though and playing and laughing and truly, because all these girls are different ages and places in life. Um, it was so cool to see how God used that time and brought in um, a birth mom that had placed 18 years ago, and she talked about her journey um, and how she found Jesus. And 
Jesus found her and the hope and the healing that has come through that. And so open conversations about faith were happening too. Um, but I saw like Darian, it was the first time that you had really opened up and you're going to share more about that, but shared your story. And it's like, I just think there's a piece of that can be so healing. Um, we did an activity, um, I forget what it's called, Kintsugi, it's I think it's called. Uh, yes, Japanese art activity with broken pottery where the birth moms went in the garage and smashed these bowls, and then you place it back together with gold paint um, with the idea of broken to beautiful and that he makes all things beautiful in his time. Um, and it was funny because even the process of doing that was like messy and <laughs> didn't work really, but, but just the conversation around the table um, was really cool. So, yeah. It, was, it is beautiful how God can Deranged. take something that is so broken and messy and be put back together. You put it back together with gold, so something very valuable, very precious, and God was able to put these lives back together. And she said, Darian, you got to go on this retreat. Um, what was your favorite part, and kind of what was some of your takeaways about it? My favorite part, I would have to say, would to just be being in a room full of women that understood exactly what I was going through. I didn't, I didn't have to explain if I didn't feel like I could or didn't, wasn't in a place to. I was supported by these women that just, we had this unspoken bond. It was, we had, we'd all dealt with the same, maybe not the same details, but the same overall story. And to just be able to be known without even speaking was truly a special thing. Um, my favorite part was the, the art, project we did it was great it was it was cool to see so many broken pieces just coming back together and I still have my bowl and it sits as a decoration and a reminder every day that I'm I'm not broken and I'm I'm beautiful and God's p putting things back together in his perfect timing um, and he really did I got to see all the moving and working pieces through my adoption story I got to see God put them together to make this beautiful journey and to see him make a, an amazing life for my son and for myself. Not only has it given him opportunities, but it's given me as well. Um, so it was really, the retreat was really, truly a special thing. And I was so happy to be understood without even having to speak. That's wonderful. And, and the theme that you had was you are loved. And I did take away that these birth mothers really did feel not just were they loved by the staff of Bethany, but they really felt that they were loved by God. And that is something very unique and very special that we're able to provide for these birth mothers. And so I just really want to thank very much Julie and especially to Darian. This is her first time really sharing her story. So she was so brave to come and share. And I so appreciate her. Thank you, ladies, for sharing your story. And um, yeah, just uh, I love, love the opportunity for us to hear it. And just what I, what I appreciate most about what Bethany is doing, and I think about especially in this season that we're in going through COVID, um, when you come into our church family and uh, maybe you're newer to your faith or you just make a decision for Christ, we, we talk about here are some first steps, some next steps that you can take. We're going to want to get you connected with people in a small group or a life group or get you, if you're a student, get you connected in student ministry, whatever it is. We, we come around you and say, here are some ways that you can begin to grow in your faith. We're going to show you what it looks like to have new life in Jesus Christ. Uh, for what Bethany is doing for these moms is just, is just amazing because they're coming alongside them and they're saying, hey, this is what you can do. This is something you probably never thought you would have to experience in your life, but we're going to come alongside you. We're going to help you in this journey. We're going to help you make these connections with the adoptive family, and, and we're going to come alongside you after the fact and help you process and, and work through. And, and ultimately, what I loved hearing uh, you ladies share is just the opportunity to, to show and share the love of Jesus uh, with these women. And so in this season, when you think about a, a mom giving birth in a hospital where no one's allowed to go to. 
And that's got to be a scary feeling, not having any contact. I mean, some of you can go back or you've been a part of being able to see a, a baby born in 24 hours, 12 hours, 36 hours after that child was born, there was family there. You were the family that got to go see the baby. And that's, that's not happening at this point. And we don't know when that's going to happen again. And so it's so important that we as a church in this month take some steps to support Bethany, to support the work that they're doing so that they are fully prepared once that child comes out of the hospital with their birth mom, that they can have that love and support. That they, though they may feel alone in that process of having a child and being there those first couple days, that as soon as that's over with, that, that, that Bethany would just surround them with their loving arms. And we can be a part of just surrounding those moms with loving arms uh, in two different ways in this upcoming month. First one is this, and uh, there's going to be, if you're here in person, there's information uh, out in our foyer, and you can talk to Julie and talk to Darian and, and, and talk to Beth and Brian about it. Um, specific ways that you can give towards Bethany Christian. Talked about the, the gift baskets that, 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 that they get or, or whatever it is. You can do that here and talk to them how to do that. As well, if you're gathering online you go home today, you can go to our website. You're going to see right on our main page where you see this Family Changes Everything logo, there's a, there's a donation link. You can click on it and you can give directly to Bethany and help them and support them during this time. And the second one is that I asked you this week, um, that you would begin to pray for Bethany. Throughout the month of, of November, Bethany and Christian, every day on their social media platforms, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, they have a specific thing that you can pray for for their organization and, and how it's impacting different people. And I would just give you the challenge, church, to follow them on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, and, and look for that prayer every single day throughout this month. And spend a moment, a minute, whatever it is, and, and pray. Whatever they're prompted to, to give us to pray for, spend that moment and pray for them. And throughout this month, our, our, our re- giving of our resources, giving of our time and prayer can have a profound impact on what God wants to do in, the, in this woman and in these families' lives. And so I'm excited for uh, this month of November for our church to continue to take some steps forward in this season to, to throw our loving arms around the people and the organization. And I believe, church family, like I shared last week, that if we continue to move forward in love in this season, we're not going to fail at succeeding in our mission of helping people find new life in Jesus Christ. And so right now, we're going to enter into our time of communion. The worship team is going to lead us in a song in just a moment. And so if you have your communion elements, you can get them ready uh, to take But it's during this time as we we sing, as we respond and we reflect, we can be so thankful, so thankful that we talked about earlier, that that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, he adopts us into our family, into his family. And that he's put other people around us to show us what it looks like then to live a part of the family of God. And after we're done with this worship psalm, we're going to enter into a time and and one of our CCCH family members is going to lead us in a time of communion. And so while we're doing that right now, would you stand with us as we sing and we reflect on this truth of how much God loves us?